ग्रीटिंग एवरी वन दिस इज वेंकटेश डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ डी एस एच बी बी राज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी नर्सापुर कोर्स नेम इज अप्लाइड फिजिक्स एंड आवर टॉपिक इज मैग्नेटिक मेटीरियल टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मैग्नेटो स्टिक्स एंड एज वेल एज दी मैग्नेटो रेसिस्टेंस ऑफ द मैग्नेटिक मेटीरियल इन प्रीवियस सीजन वी कंप्लीटेड स्टीरिजिस लूप ऑफ मैग्नेटिक मेटीरियल एंड वी इज डोमाइन थीरी ऑफ magnetic materials ferromagnetism as well as we completed hard and soft magnetic materials hard magnetic materials soft magnetic material differences so the, which is completely depend upon the coercivity of the magnetic materials so that things we discuss and hysteresis is also which can be uh, lagging behind of the magnetization uh, so magnetization value can be lagging Uh, behind when we are applying the magnetic field to the magnetic material the material can be magnetized after removal of the magnetic field also the material is showing some magnetization value so this is known as uh, saturation magnetization value as well as retentivity as well as coercivity values we have discussed in our previous lecture uh, this domain theory each and every ferromagnetic material having the each and every domain individual domains and domain orientations also we discussed in the last class now today we will discuss about the magneto stiction as well as the magneto resistance of ferromagnetic materials so first and foremost thing we will go for the magneto stiction what is magneto stiction when a magnetic field is applied to the magnetic material so the material can be magnetized before the magnetization process the material whatever the material inside atoms and molecules so they started with the vibrations these vibrations can develop uh, a size or shape or length or dimension changes we can see so such type of uh, changing size or shape or dimension is known as uh, materials magneto stiction's so the main thing when a magnetic field is applied to the magnetic material so it experiences as alteration of in shape or size or uh, dimension or uh, length we can say so this property of some magnetic materials is known as magneto stiction generally magneto stiction we can see for the ferromagnetic materials as well as the ferrimagnetic materials the change of dimension of magnetic material during magnetization process so which will continue up to the when the material becomes completely magnetized so this type of uh, effect is known as magneto stiction so here if you see the diagrams two diagrams is one is the with magnetic field another one is the without magnetic without magneto without magnetization values so here first one is that we are not applying any magnetic field m is not m is not is equal to zero and then second we are applying Mag some magnetic field M is not equal to zero. So here, if you see the changes in the size as well as the some shape of domains, each and every domain changes we can see. So due to these changes, the magneto stiction can be developed in the magnetic materials. The change in the length of a ferromagnetic material, for example, iron is a ferromagnetic material. Let us we we consider it as a iron rod. is a ferromagnetic material iron rod is when that is magnetized uh, so that changes change in the uh, length of the iron rod we can see with the help of, uh, with respect to the magnetic field is known as magneto stiction so generally the change in the length of the ferromagnetic um, iron rod so when it is magnetized was discovered by the james zoll so james zoll which is discovered by 1842 so this effect is known as Joule's effect. So, what is Joule's effect? When we are applying a magnetic field to ferromagnetic material like iron rod, so it is showing the change in the length. So that effect is known as Joule's effect, which is because which is developed by the Joules. So that's why we can say this is a Joule's effect. So generally, this magneto stiction uh, can be. showing by the some materials that materials are completely ferromagnetic as well as the ferrimagnetic materials these two materials are exhibit the magneto stiction so when uh, the magneto stiction can be calculated by the magneto stiction coefficient or joule's magneto stiction coefficient 
magnetostriction coefficient or Joule's magnetostriction coefficient. So, what is magnetostriction coefficient? So, already I told you iron rod, we are applying a magnetic field to the iron rod. So, then its length is changing. So, such type of changing length is known as uh, Joule's effect, we, uh, I already told you. So, it is a fractional variation of length. When uh, as the magnetization arises from 0 to saturation magnetization point, so 0 to saturation magnetization point, we are applying the magnetized magnetic field, so which is denoted by the lambda. The, if the length of the ferromagnetic rod we are taking as a L is a length of the ferromagnetic rod, and after magnetizing its length can be changed, we can see. From 0 to saturation value, we are applying magnetic field to the uh, ferromagnetic rod. Then uh, the length of the ferromagnetic rod can be varied. So it can be vibrated, that means it can be varied like so uh, x is uh, x plus l like that. So it can be varied. So this type of variation of the length we can say as completely we can take over as delta l. So delta l the changing the length of iron rod is not taken as denoted by the delta L. The ratio of delta L by original length, change in length by original length, which will provide the magnetostriction coefficient. The change in length by length of iron rod, complete total length of iron rod, which will provide the information of magnetostriction. So, the magnetostriction coefficient, lambda is magnetostriction coefficient. So, there is a loss in energy due to friction in magnetic materials like a coarse, especially we can see in the transformer coarse. So, there is a some, some amount of the sound we can see that is a humming sound. So, due to this magnetostriction only, uh, the transformers humming sounds we can see. So, this is the magnetostriction. This magnetostriction can be classified into three types the types of magnetostriction. The magnetostriction can be classified into three types. One is the longitudinal magnetostriction, another one uh, transverse magnetostriction as well as third one is the volume magnetostriction. Longitudinal magnetostriction. When a change in the dimension, change in the dimension, when a change in dimension is parallel to the applied field, is parallel to the applied field, parallel to to the applied field is known as longitudinal magnetostriction. So, when we are changing uh, the length is, we are applying magnetic field to the magnetic material. So, the dimension is changing the perpendicular to the magnetic field. Then such type of changing is known as, such type of magnetostriction is known as transverse magnetostriction. And third one is volume magnetostriction. When a change in the dimension in both direction as a parallel as well as the perpendicular direction is known as volume magnetostriction. The magnetostriction can be classified into three parts, three types. One is the longitudinal magnetostriction, second one is transverse magnetostriction and third one is volume magnetostriction. So, the length whatever the dimension is changing the direction of applied field is known as volume magnetostriction. So, dimension is changing to the applied field perpendicularly, say that is known as transverse uh, magnetostriction and third one is volume, both ways uh, as well as the parallel and perpendicularly di the dimension is changing with respect to magnetic field is known as volume magnetostriction. The examples for the magnetostriction materials nickel, iron as well as cobalt and iron aluminum alloys. So, these are the best examples for the magnetostriction. Those who the materials are presently exhibiting uh, magnetostriction. So, that are the nickel, iron, cobalt, iron, al iron aluminum alloy and some other materials, some other alloys like uh, uh, teflon, and galfnam and medgala. So, these are the alloys, some type of the alloys, these also show in the magnetostriction values. So, these magnetostriction materials we are using in the actuators as well as some motors we are using. 
sensors, actuators, as well as some motors we are using these materials uh, in general. So the magnetostriction applications. These magnetostriction materials, ferromagnetic or ferromagnetic materials, we are using to uh, sound detection in underwater. And underwater, we need to identify the sound, sound of any object or sound of anything in the underwater. So we need to identify. So definitely, we will use underwater sound det detection for, for purposing of the underwater sound detection purpose. We are using magnetostriction materials and generation of the supersonic sound. So because according to the definition of the magnetostriction, we are applying magnetic field to the magnetic materials. So we can see with respect to field, some amount of the size or shape or uh, uh, length or anything, dimension or changing we can observe. So for this generation of the supersonic sounds, we are using magnetostriction materials. For the generation of high frequency oscillations also, we are using magnetostriction materials. So this is the complete overview of the magnetostriction. Next topic is magneto resistance. Before going to the magneto resistance, so what is the resistance of a material? So generally we know very well the opposition of the electric field will provide the resistance of the material. We already learned these all things in the semiconductor physics. So the magneto resistance, so which is a property of a material, change the value of its electrical res resistivity with corresponding magnetic field is known as magneto resistance. The magneto resistance is a property of a material to change the its electrical resistivity when we are applying magnetic field. So such phenomena is known as magneto resistance. This effect was invented by William Thomson in 1856. So commonly known as who is he? Is Lord Kelvin. So this Kelvin we are using the temperature. Uh, from uh, degree centigrade to Kelvin conversion, you know very well. So this effect is completely invented by William Thomson in 1856. Generally, the resistance, uh, how the resistance is uh, developed in a material. Generally, the resistance caused by collisions between the charges, or else uh, like charge carriers, like charges or uh, unlike charges. So there is a collision between them. The resistance can be automatically developed in the material. So at absolute temperature, that means zero temperature, so there will be no collision, we are no collision in the materials. So no resistance. The collision is there definitely, the resistance is there as well as the conductance will be there. So there is no collision means no resistance. So the resistance caused by the uh, collisions between the like charges as well as the unlike charges we are seeing in the materials. So this is a natural fundamental point. So at that particular temperature, absolute zero temperature, so there is no collisions. There is no collisions means there is no resistance. So imperfections are dislocations and doping concentrations and some temperatures we can apply to the materials. Definitely the atoms or molecules are can be vibrated. So once they vibrated uh, or they are changing their positions automatically the resistance can be developed in the material. So imperfections, however, uh, whatever it may be some kind of the doping concentrations and some temperature uh, is applied to the material, automatically the atoms or molecules can be vibrate, vibrations can be started. So due to these vibrations, the resistance of the material is developed as we discussed these all things in the semiconductor physics also. So these vibrations and imperfections cause the collisions. These collisions, we are increasing the collisions, then the resistance is also increases. So this is the major thing and the major phenomena for the resistance in the general materials, materials or materials. So when we are applying magnetic field to uh, a magnetic material, the resistance of the magnetic material is increased why this mega magnetic materials resistance is increased so that is i think due to the magnetic field so the vibrations of the atoms or molecules presented inside so these vibrations may lead to develop uh, resistance of the material 
and these vibrations may lead to develop change in the mean free path what are the mean free path value so electron easily jump from the lower energy orbital to the higher energy orbital so we can see these are things we discussed in the semiconductor physics also so these can be developed inside the material once these all things developed in the material the resistance is also automatically developed in the material so the dependence of resistance with respect to magnetic field is known as the magneto resistance so this type of dependence of the materials uh, whatever the electrical resistance electrical resistance is completely depend upon the magnetic field is known as magneto resistance of the material magneto resistance is directly proportional to magnetic field or not this means according to the definition so the according to the definition the magneto resistance value is proportional to the length of the magnetic fields I and mean strength sorry strength of the magnetic field the magneto resistance is proportional to the strength of the magnetic field this means when we are applying large amount of magnetic field to the materials the resistance is also automatically developed in the material and also the enhancement in the resistance corresponding with magnetic field also we can see so this is a general phenomenon that means the magneto resistance is directly proportional to the magnetic field when a magnetic field is applied to the uh, magnetic material then hall voltage is uh, develops in the magnetic material the hall voltage is which will be cancel the lorentz force for the carriers with average velocity so the hall developed voltage is due. whatever the hall voltage is developed that hall voltage is cancels the lorentz forces in the uh, magnetic materials so but the all charge carriers do not move with same velocities we are applying magnetic field to the magnetic material so the all charge carriers are not in the same uh, same velocities so some charge ca charge carriers are having the some type of the velocity uh, some charge carriers having the different types of the velocities also we can see because due to we are applying the magnetic field magnetic field we are applying so there is a slight variations we can see there is the particle to particle variations so that's why so they they don't have the same velocities or whatever the same same velocities we are applying magnetic field all particles move with the different velocities not move with the same velocities so this one when uh, the average velocity we are finding the average velocity which can compensate the moving velocity moving velocity that is greater than the uncompensated or resulting trajectories that are not to the applied field so which results the effective decreases in the mean free path so we are applying magnetic field to the magnetic material all particles are in the not in the same velocities which means different different velocities particles are moving so definitely which will compensate with the uh, moving with velocities what are the average velocity we are taking that is greater than the uncompensated and resulting the trajectories that are not along with the applied field that are not along with the applied field so these which can which may lead to result the effect to decrease in the mean free path so the mean free path will value is almost approximately equal to the 100 nanometers in the range so if the mean free path is very less the electron transport mechanism takes place from the lower to higher orbital very easily this is the fundamental point we know very well so the, so this decrease in the mean free path um, and hence increase in the resistivity of the material so uh, once the resistance of the material is increased so the due to the magnetic field this is a major cause so we are applying magnetic field to the magnetic material uh, all particles are not in the same uh, velocities they are having the different velocities so they are moving with the uh, for example if you are taking the average velocity of compensated and those are moving with the velocities greater than the uncompensated which results the trajectories that are not aligned with the applied field so these results in the effect to decrease in the mean free path hence increase in the resistivity mean free path decreases means resistivity is also increased which may lead to increase which means the mean free path is directly proportional to the resistivity of the material now as we are applying the magnetic field 
uh, the magnetic field is continuously we are increasing the charge carriers are more and more deviated and more number of charge carriers also moving can be started due to the magnetic field so which may lead to increase the magneto resistance further so this is the complete uh, inside of material so the conductivity of semiconductor in magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of current flow which means this can be expressed in terms of zero field conductivity sigma naught the hall coefficient rh and applied magnetic field b and coefficient beta magnetic resistance coefficient beta so the relationship is sigma is equal to sigma naught 1 plus beta sigma naught square into rh square into b square so the quantity called the magneto resistivity is defined as uh, generally resistivity is completely uh, reciprocal of the conductivity so here the fractional change we are seeing in the resistivity due to the application of the magnetic field so the magneto resistivity is given by delta rho by rho naught is equal to rho b minus rho naught by rho naught original resistivity change in the resistivity both will provide the magneto resistance so from equation 1 and 2 this equation 1 and equation 2 so we are writing magneto resistance or magneto magneto resistivity formula we are writing formula for the magneto resistivity delta rho by rho naught is equal to beta into rh square b square by rho naught square where beta is known as coefficient of the magneto resistivity which depends on the scattering mechanism and mean free times of the charge carriers the coefficient of the magneto resistivity is completely depend upon the scattering mechanism as well as the mean free time of charge carriers so this property we are using this is a completely magneto resistance so this type of property we are using in computers to read the magnetic data how will read a potential difference is applied that means potential difference is nothing but voltage a voltage is applied to a wire that is placed close to magnetic material that is placed close to magnetic material on a disc or tape on a disc or tape disc means cd compact disc dvds or magnetic tape recording tape media so we are placing a magnetic material very closer closer to the uh, which is having the wire uh, then uh, we are applying the potential difference so then the as a magnetic field representing the data on the material passed by the wire whatever the data is in the material compact disc or magnetic recording in the media so the tape is there that can be passed by the wire the resistance of the wire changes with respect to magnetic field so this is known as magneto resistance so the resistance of the magnetic field changed completely changed with respect to magnetic field data so this change in the resistance changes the current flow current flow in the wire so we are monitoring the current whatever the current we are providing so voltage we are providing we will monitor the current and the change in the current we can measure and corresponding to the magnetic field magnetic field to the disk so the magneto resistance on the field not change the change of field so it is using less independent and precise speed of magnetic material so this is the magneto resistance complete application in magnetic recording media so generally we are using uh, to store the data in the uh, previous days we used uh, cds and tapes we are using how to read the data whatever the data you are storing in that cds or tapes so with the help of the magneto resistance phenomena we can read it so we are applying magnetic field to the uh, a magnetic material whatever material that stores in the data and we are applying potential difference so then automatically the uh, resistance can be developed so the charge carrier flow can be developed means resistance can be developed due to this resistance uh, the variations in the electricity also we can see uh, current flow so with variations in the current flow we can calculate the whatever the data we can read in the computers so this is the major uh, advantages for the uh, of magneto resistance of the ferromagnetic material
so almost we have done now, today we completed magneto resistance as well as the magneto restriction these two topics we completed and tomorrow we will discuss magnetic materials applications so thank you thank you everyone like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates